The final ratio for chapter 20 is the creditors turnover ratio. So we need to remember that creditors need to be managed very well. We want to make sure we're paying them on time and keeping them happy. And the reason is because they provide us with um, all our inventory to sell. So any disruption to supply from a creditor because they're unhappy means we're going to lose sales. We just simply won't have the stock to sell. Also, buying stock on credit then gives the firm time to try and sell that stock and turn it into cash before we pay the creditor back. Otherwise, we'd have to pay uh, cash up front for our stock and that puts more pressure on the business to sell it quickly. So we'd like to be able to buy on credit because it buys us a little bit of time in order to sell the inventory. And lastly, creditors are an excellent source of interest-free finance. Um, that is, unless a particular creditor charges interest, but most don't. And otherwise, if we wanted to buy goods that we couldn't afford today, we might have to borrow money from the bank, and the bank would charge interest, whereas a creditor is really just an interest-free way to buy something for a period of time. So what the creditor's turnover ratio measures is we buy stock, we put it on the shelf, we then sell it to customers, and then we looked at it. That, uh, the average time it took to do that was called our stock turnover in days, and then the average time it took to collect the amount owing from debtors was called our debtors turnover in days. Well, we can also uh, factor in well, how long does it take for the supplier to sell the goods to us and give us an invoice, and on average, for us to pay our supplier. So that is going to be what is called our creditors turnover ratio. And we can express it two ways. One, the number of times per year the creditors are turned over, i.e. paid in full. Or secondly, the average number of days it takes to pay amounts owing to creditors. So looking at the first way we can calculate it was the number of times per year creditors are turned over. And we simply take the credit purchases of stock during the year. We'll exclude all cash purchases and just focus on the credit purchases. And we'll divide it by our average creditors for the period. The average number of days it takes to pay amounts owing to creditors is probably easy to interpret, so where possible we'd like to be able to calculate that. And we can do so by flipping the above ratio and times in the top by 365. So we'll move average creditors from the bottom to the top, times it by 365, and then divide that by credit purchases of stock. Uh, one last way we can calculate creditors turnover in days is sometimes we don't have all the information we need, so we simply take 365 and divide it by the creditors turnover ratio. So simply taking the number we calculated up here and putting it under here, and that will give us the same result as this uh, calculation here. Looking at an example, in 2015 the business purchased on credit stock of $40,000 and the balance of creditors control at the end of 2014 was 4,000 and at the end of 2015 was 6,000. So looking at the creditors turnover ratio for 2015, let's look at it as a number. We can take out, uh, sorry, use the credit purchases of stock of 40,000, divide it by average creditors, which would be 5,000, and we get a number of 8.0. The much better way to interpret it or to calculate it is to do it in days. So we will take the average creditors, which is 5,000, times that by 365 and divide it by the credit purchases of stock of 40,000 and we get a total of 46 days.